If someone walked into a bank in the 1960s pitching a remote-controlled underwater bulldozer, they would have been laughed out of the building. A diesel-powered crawler working on the ocean floor, operated by radio control, in an environment where visibility is nearly zero. It sounds like something from a science fiction novel. Yet Komatsu, the Japanese heavy equipment giant, did exactly that. They built machines that can disappear beneath the waves, push sediment across the seabed, and resurface hours later as if nothing extraordinary happened. The strangest part? These dozers have been working for over five decades, tackling jobs that no other equipment on Earth can handle. Traditional underwater excavation involves dredging equipment. Cutter suction dredges, hopper dredges, clamshell buckets suspended from barges. These systems work for large-scale operations in open water, but have significant limitations that become apparent in certain conditions. Dredging vessels require deep enough water to float, making them useless in shallow coastal zones. They struggle in confined spaces like narrow river channels or small fishing harbors. Setting up a conventional dredging operation requires temporary jetties, access roads, and infrastructure that can cost more than the excavation work itself. Japan faces unique geographic challenges that make these limitations particularly problematic. The island nation sits along the Pacific Ring of Fire, subject to earthquakes, tsunamis, and typhoons that constantly reshape its coastline. Rivers flowing from mountainous terrain deposit enormous quantities of sediment into harbors and fishing ports. Coastal communities depend on maintaining navigable waterways, but the spaces needing work are often too shallow and confined for traditional dredging equipment. What Japan needed was something that could work independently in shallow water, operate in tight spaces inaccessible to floating equipment, and function without massive infrastructure requirements. Komatsu was founded in 1921 when Komatsu Ironworks separated from the Takeuchi Mining Company to become an independent manufacturer. The firm takes its name from Komatsu City in Ishikawa Prefecture, where operations began. In Japanese, the word Komatsu means small pine tree. The enterprise started producing mining equipment and machine tools. By 1931, Komatsu had built Japan's first crawler-type farm tractor. The experience gained from tracked vehicle development proved invaluable when, in 1943, the manufacturer produced the Model 1 ground leveling machine, Japan's first bulldozer. Unlike American dozers of the era that used cable systems to raise and lower the blade, Komatsu's design featured hydraulic blade control. This was revolutionary for its time. After World War II, bulldozers became essential for reconstruction. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, Komatsu expanded rapidly, eventually establishing its goal of competing directly with Caterpillar. By the late 1960s, Komatsu engineers began exploring a radical concept. The manufacturer had developed radio-controlled bulldozer technology for hazardous applications. Now they asked a different question. Could a dozer be designed to work underwater? In 1970, the brand officially answered the question by introducing its first underwater dozer prototype. The following year, the D-155W entered production as the world's first commercially marketed amphibious dozer. It was an engineering achievement unlike anything the construction industry had seen. The W borrowed the basic chassis and powertrain from Komatsu's proven D-155A crawler dozer but incorporated extensive modifications for underwater operation. The machine weighed about 43 metric tons, roughly 95,000 pounds. Power came from a modified six-cylinder diesel engine producing 300 horsepower. Making a diesel engine function underwater required solving a fundamental problem. Combustion needs air. The 155 addressed this with twin tower systems rising from the machine's body like periscopes on a submarine. One tower supplied fresh air intake while the other expelled exhaust gases. These stacks allowed the dozer to operate at depths up to 7 meters, approximately 23 feet, while keeping the engine breathing. The entire power compartment was sealed in a watertight enclosure. Every potential entry point for water received specialized sealing systems. Electrical components sat protected in waterproof housings. 
The design represented a fusion of bulldozer engineering with submarine technology. Extra wide tracks measuring over 2.3 feet across provided stability on soft underwater terrain. The broader footprint prevented the machine from sinking into loose sediment while providing traction for pushing material across the seabed. Perhaps the most innovative aspect of the D-155W was its remote control system. Operators never entered the machine during underwater work. Instead, they stood on shore watching the exhaust towers move through the water, guiding the dozer via radio controls. This approach solved multiple problems simultaneously. Human operators cannot work underwater without diving equipment, and even then, visibility in disturbed sediment approaches zero. Remote operation kept workers safe from the hazards of underwater construction while allowing precise control of the machine. Dive teams typically accompanied underwater operations, assisting with repairs and helping guide the dozers in situations where visual reference was needed. The operator on shore relied on the visible exhaust towers and their knowledge of the work area to position the machine accurately. This remote control capability would later prove valuable in an entirely unexpected application, far from any body of water. Asunaro Aoki Construction executed the first commercial project using the amphibious dozer in 1970, dredging a river channel in Japan. This marked the beginning of a partnership between the contractor and Komatsu that continues to this day. Over the following decades, the unit found applications across multiple industries. River channel dredging remained a primary use, keeping waterways navigable for shipping and reducing flood risks in communities along Japan's rivers. Harbors and fishing ports required constant sediment removal to maintain operational depths. Offshore construction projects used the machines for building breakwaters and artificial reefs. Most units were deployed in Japan, but Komatsu sold machines overseas as well. Units operated in the Philippines for river desilting work. European customers acquired machines for marine construction projects. The manufacturer sold 36 units total between 1971 and 1993, when production ended. 1155W found itself in perhaps the most hostile environment imaginable, not underwater, but at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant following the 1986 disaster. When reactor number four exploded, Soviet authorities faced an unprecedented cleanup challenge. Radiation levels near the destroyed reactor were lethal to humans. Robotic systems were desperately needed to remove radioactive debris without exposing workers to fatal doses. Komatsu's amphibious dozer had something no conventional bulldozer offered, fully operational remote control capability. The sealed construction designed to keep water out provided some protection against radioactive contamination of internal components. Soviet cleanup crews deployed the 155 at Chernobyl for debris removal operations. Unfortunately, even this amazing machine couldn't withstand Chernobyl's extreme conditions. Reports indicate radiation levels reaching 10,000 Roentgens per hour overwhelmed the electronics. The dozer eventually failed. The remains of one UNTI can still be found in the Chernobyl exclusion zone near the Jupiter factory in Pripyat. The engine and control equipment have been removed, but the hull remains as a testament to both the machine's versatility and the limits of what any equipment could withstand. Of the 36 units built, five survive today. All are owned and operated by Asunaro Aoki Construction in Japan. These machines have been meticulously maintained and repeatedly overhauled through more than 1,200 underwater construction projects. The D-155W fleet faced its greatest test following the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami of March 2011. The magnitude 9 earthquake and subsequent waves devastated coastal infrastructure across northeastern Japan. Approximately 320 fishing ports suffered damage. Harbors filled with debris and sediment from the tsunami's retreat. Asunaro Aoki fully restored each of their five units for reconstruction work. The machines deployed to reconstruct damaged bridges, harbors and ports in affected regions. Footage exists of the dozers restoring a harbor in Iwate Prefecture, their exhaust towers cutting through the water as they reshaped the seafloor. 
One particular advantage emerged during this work. The amphibious dozers could prevent sand from being sucked out through gaps between stones in damaged coastal structures. As the machines pushed and simultaneously compacted sand over damaged areas, they built up material over the gaps more effectively than alternative methods. The dozers also eliminated the need to construct temporary access roads that land-based equipment would require. They simply drove into the water and began working where conventional machines could not follow. Despite unique capabilities, the D-155W presented significant challenges that limited wider adoption. Salt water creates corrosive conditions that attack any equipment. Rust and corrosion proved constant maintenance concerns. The sealed systems required careful inspection to ensure watertight integrity. Any breach could flood the engine compartment and disable the machine underwater. Operating costs far exceeded conventional dozers. Specialized components, intensive maintenance requirements, and need for dive team support made every project expensive. The 23-foot depth limitation restricted applications to relatively shallow water. These factors combined to limit the 155 to a specialized niche rather than widespread adoption. Only 36 units across 22 years of production. More than 30 years after the last unit rolled off the production line, Kamatsu is returning to amphibious dozer development with technology that addresses many limitations. The manufacturer unveiled a next-generation electric amphibious bulldozer at CES 2025 in Las Vegas, developed in partnership with Asunaro. Electric power eliminates the fundamental challenge that defined the D-155W. Diesel engines require air for combustion, necessitating those distinctive snorkel towers. Electric motors have no such requirement. The new design uses a 450 kilowatt hour battery pack with four hour charging time. An optional 500 kilowatt hour configuration could extend operational time to six hours. More significantly, the electric system enables operation at far greater depths. While the current prototype operates at seven meters due to GPS limitations, Komatsu plans to extend operational capability to 50 meters. That is nearly seven times deeper than diesel machines could reach. The new bulldozers incorporate autonomous operation through automatic control and artificial intelligence. AI analysis combines 3D survey data, design specifications and construction history with weather information to optimize operations. Workers could potentially guide underwater robots from comfortable offices rather than standing on shorelines. Testing began in July 2023. Komatsu showcased the technology at Expo 2025 in Osaka. The Komatsu D-155W remains one of the most unusual pieces of heavy equipment ever manufactured. A bulldozer that disappears beneath the waves, controlled by an operator who cannot see it, performing work in environments hostile to every other type of construction machinery. Less than 40 were built. Only five survive. Yet those five machines, some over 40 years old, continue working in Japan, maintained by craftsmen who understand systems that went out of production decades ago. The concept that seemed absurd in 1970 proved not only workable but irreplaceable for certain applications. No other machine could accomplish what the D-155W did in shallow coastal waters and disaster recovery situations. From diesel snorkels to electric autonomy, from radio control to artificial intelligence, the underwater bulldozer continues evolving. But the fundamental insight remains unchanged. Sometimes the most valuable machine is the one crazy enough to work where nothing else can follow.